Hi there. Welcome to Chris BI. My name is Chris Wagner, and today we're going to be going over the definitive guide to Power BI administration. That's right. Today we're going to be going over every feature that, that's available uh, today, as in September 7th, 2020, when it comes to administering Power BI, we're going to be going through every little piece that's out there. This is going to be a long one, so there's going to be timestamps down below for you to skip ahead to where you might have questions. If you are new to administering Power BI, I highly recommend listening to the whole thing. Just turn it on, listen, hear, hear my comments and the feedback around this. If, you're, if you've been administering Power BI for a long time, Skip ahead to the timestamps down below to any of the new features that you want to hear about. Uh, well, because I'm going to be running through everything that's available to it. All right. But, but before we head to my desktop, remember hit like, subscribe to the channel if, if you like the content that we go, got going on. I just passed a thousand subscribers, so thank you to everyone who's out there and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Uh, couldn't have got here without all of your help. All right, let's head over to it. Ah. All right, when you log into PowerBI.com, you come into your home screen and you're going to see something along these lines. Hopefully, you've got it all customized. You've got your custom colors, your themes, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, but if you want to go into the administrative section, real easy to find. It's right up here under settings. Go to admin portal. And this is going to take you to uh, the, the usage metrics. These usage metrics, hopefully you have more than just yourself who's using Power BI, but you know, if you're a small shop, maybe it's just you. Uh, but you're gonna see lots and lots of content inside of here when it comes to who's doing what inside your service. This is very dated. I do not know of any enterprise who's using this solely at, to track their, their analytics and their metrics. If you're looking to administer Power BI and you're looking to have a better understanding of what's going on inside the service, you're going to need more than this. I highly recommend going over to the Power BI REST APIs, grabbing some of these admin um, uh, APIs and setting up so, some regular reoccurring extracts of information out of the Power BI service. You can get tons of info on uh, who's creating what, who's using what, who's going in and doing uh, you know the various things inside of Power BI. Uh, there's some you know there's a little bit of stuff to kind of get this up and running and get that set up so that it works. But uh, you 100% need to take the time to go through and do that. Okay, so you do have these portals here for the usage metrics. Um, it can get you started. You know, if you're a small shop, maybe 50, 100 users, maybe this will be fine. Know that this is not super spot on. It's more directional. It's, it's you know, we talk about that MVP, you know, kind of suck, okay, and then like great enterprise class. Uh, I don't know how, you know, if this has moved into that okay category yet. Uh, so just be aware of that's that. All right. Uh, next two things, users and audit logs. Both, both of these things, because Power BI is an O365 uh, service, or I'm sorry, admin, you know, Microsoft O365 service. These are all managed through the O365 Admin Center. Uh, to get into that, you need to be an admin in your tenant's O365 account. Otherwise, this will take you nowhere. So um, if you're not already an O365 admin, uh, you're going to have to connect with your, your admins and see about getting you in there as a provisional one so you can understand and go through and define your users, audit logs, that type of a thing. Tenant settings, this is a big one. Uh, there's tons of content into here. We're going to be circling back to this one uh, once I, I run through an overview of each one of these. So check the timestamps down below for when we get to those. All right. All right. Capacity settings. This is the next guy. So, and the capacity settings, if you have a premium instances, this is where you can manage them. Uh, so, you, both the, the P SKUs and the, I think it's the S SKUs, um, you can go in here, you can manage your premium capacities. These are going to be, um, well, hopefully, uh, I, I have a contact who's going to hopefully help me out by getting me a temporary one or a free one that I can use to, to make a few videos to show you how these things work. 
Um, but they're pretty straightforward. Look for uh, your documentation on the premium entities uh, on Microsoft's site. They do. Ha they have released two very, very useful uh, new refresh summary uh, tabs that are here. One for the history and one for your schedule. This is an excellent way for you to build out reports and find out where you have refreshes and failures that are going on across your service. And on the schedule one, it um, obviously these will only be populated if you have content that, that's coming through in a Power BI premium space. But it'll, this one will show you when and where you have processing time available for your reports to refresh. Straight up, this guy right here is something you need to build reports off of. These, unfortunately, uh, and I hope someone in the comments down below will say I'm wrong, but there are no uh, APIs for this. So you have to go out and download this, post these out into you know your own Power BI report, show people you know what your availability is, when they should be doing refreshes. I know my my day job. We found out one of our capacities is basically booked from midnight until two in the afternoon. Uh, it has negative time for refreshes, so it's a big indicator of you know how you can balance things out. So, all right, embed codes. This is a new security feature that allows you to embed uh, Power BI content in external facing um, uh, reports. This is where you can go out and you can uh, create these, use these for other people. All right, uh, organizational visuals. Now. This is an excellent place for you to go in if you want to, as your as a company, do a deeper dive and understand the visuals that are available inside your organization. Uh, let's say you're a bank, a financial institution, or uh, some place uh, you know where security is really important. The a lot of the custom visuals may have external links in them, like for example, a lot of the arcs. Uh, uh, maps that are out there, those do external calls. There's, in fact, there's there's kind of no way to not do an external call, right? So if you're a bank or financial institution, you may want to turn that off because you may not want that information be, you know, going outside of your organization. So turning off custom visuals may be a thing that you want to do, uh, but you may want to at the same time enable a custom visual inside your organization or you may write your own custom visual and you want everyone in your organization to be able to take advantage of it. For example, I've seen some organizations that make up their own uh, date slicer because they have a very specific way of looking at information inside their, or their company. This is a place where you can publish any customized visuals that you want your organization to use in a de facto uh, or make, make, the, make it available to all your content creators. It's actually a great service that's often underutilized. This is also an excellent place for you to go and, and if you wanted to take the time to download the most common custom visuals that you would not want to lose in the event that they you know get pulled off the store, this is one you could way you could download them, make them available inside your company and not have to worry about those visuals being missed. Now uh, this is some brand new uh, functionality that's available. Basically, this allows uh, uh, this allows you to uh, uh, con or connect all your data flows to an Azure um, uh, Data Lake G2 storage account, so that everything that's being stored inside those data flows ends up getting stored in that account. What this means is you can access that storage account and you know a data flow just stores that information in csv files right so if you had another process or another uh whatever data you know data process that's out there you wanted it to be able to access your data flows by turning this on you you can enable your data flows to be able to to, to create that that CSV file in a common place that's readily accessible by yourself and potentially others. Uh, one of the great ways to use uh, data flows is as a meta uh, metadata definition space. So you define your entities inside your data flows. Maybe you do a load or two through the data flow process. But then if you're a large organization, you could use Databricks or you could use Synapse or you could use you know, any tool you want in order to update and keep those files um, 
uh, well, updated and refresh them. Uh, this can really help when it comes to needing scale compute, uh, especially if you're talking about very large files. Be aware that your downstream processes in Power BI will have to uh, pick up from those. So if you do that, um, uh, you know, just be aware you may have to like take some next steps as well. But there's a real powerful option that's available for you, especially as more and more companies are becoming cloud savvy, more and more engineers are starting to bring on these additional tools and, and learn how to, how to use them. This is a great option to make your data flows more connected with everything else you're working on. Uh, the workspaces tab is is really key. This is one that is uh, very useful for, for any O2 or Power BI admin to be able to go in and understand all of the workspaces that are in your organization and then actually be able to go in and uh, change the access on something, right? So here you can go in and you can add people into a, a workspace as admins. Uh, this is excellent in case that you, know, you have a, a team that creates a workspace uh, the person who created it and the only administrator of it leaves the company or just isn't around for whatever reason. Uh, and you need to be able to go in and identify and, uh, and put in some additional admins in your tenant. Uh, you can actually find personal workspaces in here. So let's say a contractor ABC uh, has been working on a Power BI dashboard for you for a while, but then he just drops off the face of the earth uh, and you need to find that. And you figure out that, oh crap, he started his personal workspace. Here's where you can go in and someone can go in and add them in. Oh crap. Well, uh, you can at least find their personal workspace. Talk to your 0365 tenant admin and they can bring that in. Next space, custom branding. All right, I already did a, a short video on this one. Um, we can go in and establish your own custom branding inside of Power BI. Uh, it's really pretty simple to do that. You just add in your logo, add in a cover in image, um, and then plop in your theme color, and you're good to go, right? So this is something that can, be, that can be done in under five minutes. Check out my other video on this, on how to do this. These protection metrics, next section. These protection metrics are uh, brand new functionality that's being added into Azure. This is something that you're gonna need to work on in conjunction with your security team. Um, straight up, really don't turn on any of this stuff unless you know what this is. Uh, I don't think you'll hurt yourself, but uh, don't touch this otherwise, all right? And then feature content. This is where you, you can go if you wanna have people that have have featured content that's available inside your organization for on your homepage, basically allows them to create a, a feature section area that's always going to show that stuff right up at the top. Uh, I should probably put together a little video on how this works and functions, but this is one of those underutilized features that's inside of Power BI that I'm a big fan of. All right. So that's an overview of all the admin capabilities inside of Power BI, but that really didn't do much. That didn't cover in depth any of these topics. And in fact, the biggest one that we're gonna to wanna to talk about is the tenant settings. Inside of here is the number one feature that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've, uh, that you've, you've actually disabled inside of Power BI. Uh, I'm pretty sure it still comes disabled, but it's something you wanna make sure you've gone in and you've, you've addressed. So we're going to be going over to the tenant settings. Um, so if you're looking for the tenant settings and you're fast forwarding through, this is tenant settings is right here. All right. All right. So when you go to the tenant settings, now this is going to be kind of long. There's lots of stuff that's in here. So buckle, buckle up. Um, we're gonna go through all this. All right, first section, help and support settings. All right, first one is something that I highly recommend you do. It comes by default as disabled, but if you turn this on, there's some things that you can do um, to really help your organization uh, adapt and start getting used to and working in Power BI. And that's creating some custom URLs to where you've documented your training documents, 
what where's your forum site inside of your your organization um uh, for discussions where do you go for licensing requests and how where do you go for your help desk all right now obviously you know if you haven't done any of these things yet this is a great punch list of things to get up and running inside your company right figure out what training you want users to have you know put those all in a team site make sure that that's available to your community get this out there also if there's a teams channel or a yammer or slack or whatever it is uh, that your community you know talks through and talks about stuff in put it inside of here this is incredibly important and helpful for users when they're just getting in and starting to work inside of power bi same thing's true of licensing requests and help desk if you don't enable these things, it just, you know, sends you to that default Microsoft site. And nah, that's just crummy. <laughs> um, honestly, it's something you want to do as soon as you can, um, uh, is go on, enable this and fill this stuff out. All right. Super important. All right. Uh, this is another big one that a lot that naturally comes disabled, but this is one thing about receiving email notifications. If there's an outage now, Obviously, hopefully, at least yourself, you want to know if something goes down, but better to have uh, an AD group or an email distribution list to uh, get, get this information. Um, if you, could, you could put those inside this column, make sure everyone who should be gets notified on that stuff. All right. And then the last one is allowing users to try uh, Power BI Pro. Um, this has always been by default. This has been a feature and functionality inside of Power BI where you could just, yes, I want to try Power BI Pro for, I think it's 60 or 90 days or something like that. I forget what it is. Uh, a lot of companies use this as um, a way to keep people up and working while they get a Power, Power BI Pro account added to their that user's profile. Uh, so they, they have a little bit of a buffer between when the user comes online and wants to start working and, you know, actually get, receives that Pro account. Uh, th this is something that's very useful in those organizations. Now, here's a big one. Other companies, you may want to manage your pro licenses and the people who are working in pro a little more proactive in this. That's why they enabled this feature. Uh, this allows you, if you're in a larger company, to say, hang on, <laughs> I don't want people just playing with and getting into stuff if we're not going to you know, ultimately give them a license, right? You know, maybe you have an entire training and data security program that you, ha you, in, you know, you have to have your users go through before they, uh, before they're allowed to have a pro license. Um, and, and frankly, if you work in any U S company or any company that has like a fear of exposing data in the cloud, uh, to some extent you should be turning this on because, People just, you know, and giving people a training on how to best handle data, that is really important. So um, I guess it's not every company in the U.S., but you know what I'm saying. If you have a training program uh, to get a, a Power BI Pro license, highly recommend uh, making them go through that and then, uh, and you know, giving them that Pro license without doing this free trial license. So, uh that's the help and support settings. All right, moving on to workspace settings. Workspace settings, um, basically, do you want users to be able to create workspaces or not? Um, uh, some companies, if they're trying to maintain higher control over this, will actually disable this for the entire organization, and they'll have, like, say, a power app that will go out and create a workspace for the users uh, depending upon their feedback, right? Like, hey, I want to create a Power BI workspace and I want to distribute information to our executive class and this is my third day on the job and I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to Power BI and I don't really know about any of these things and why should I really be publishing to our executives? Hang on, maybe I shouldn't have, you know, a Power BI workspace, right? Um, you know, those types of organizations exist where they want to keep a real tight control over what's going on inside of Power BI. Uh, that is good if you have all of that 
all of those mechanisms automated and those processes around documenting those workspaces, you've got that fully robust and built out and defined in a user base there. Hey, awesome. Turn this on. Enable that app to create the workspaces once it's documented what's going to go on in there. Uh, but for everyone else, for everyone else, um, just leave this enabled. Let your organization do it. It can become a real nightmare if you don't have this on. Uh, people, The handful of people who get workspaces up and running, uh, they start to pile content on top of each other inside of workspaces. Uh, so that these workspaces have hundreds upon hundreds of Power BI reports in them because you only let them have that one workspace. You, while administrative-wise, it may seem better, uh, at the end of the day, you're creating a, a huge nightmare and a headache. Please do not turn this off inside your org. Worst case scenario, uh, define a security group on who can create Power BI workspaces uh, and restrict it to them. But please, please, please do not um, uh, do not turn this off for your organization. It'll just it'll save you a huge nightmare in the long run. All right. Um, this is a big one. This is a no-brainer. Uh, if this should be enabled, you shouldn't disable this. Uh, that's use data sets across workspaces. 100% you should allow this. Uh, if you have anyone who knows why anyone would want to turn this off, leave a comment down below. But this is uh, this is a great new feature, the Power BI works, Workspace Gen 2 uh, that was rolled out last year. Thank you, Wukaj. Uh, you rock, man. Um, this stuff is super great, super great. I mean, uh, disabling this is like saying, I do not like candle or I do not like light bulbs. I would like to go back to the candle. Um, uh, maybe there's some of you that really like the mood lighting that comes with candles, I guess. Uh, but do not, do not disable this one. Uh, in fact, hey, Power BI, this might be something that you, we could even uh, remove from the service. All right. All right, and then uh, block classic workspace creation. Heck yeah, this should be enabled. This is a brand new functionality that was rolled out in the last couple of months. You saw it's disabled in my tenant. I feel embarrassed that I got to this and had not turned this on. So apply that right away. That There's no joke. There's no reason ever. Like I said, there's no reason to go back to those old days of those old workspaces. You know, like we don't need, you know, to go back to horses. We have cards. We don't need to go back to candles. We have light bulbs. Uh, turn this on. Never look back. Uh, just get that done. All right, those are the workspace settings that we have for you. All right, information protection. This one, uh, allow users to enable sensitive, sensitivity labels in Power BI. You can enable this stuff. Um, uh, basically, this is gonna be for a bigger organization that has some very strict policies around this, around how you want to manage this. And honestly, if you have a large organization where you want to have these types of metadata, metadata tagging associated with this, um, you know, talk with your security team, talk with your cloud team, have some meetings around this before, you know, this is not something you should just like turn on and go ahead with this. I, I don't think my my recommendation would be to just kind of leave this as is cancel whatever that guy had going on there uh, but leave this as is uh, unless you're in a larger company all right uh, export and sharing settings share content with external users this is enabled for the entire organization by default holy crap turn this off right um, you know you can at least, you can restrict this to some space. Frankly, this is a this is the biggest potential security vulnerability that you could have inside of Power BI. Uh, this allows you to just publish your internal financial filings out to the entire internet. Um, you know, if you have nothing to hide, maybe. But I don't know what organization you know beyond a person or. You know, even one person, you should really not have this on. It should really be disabled. Going here, this is your number one, number one, number one step. 
Uh, like, don't have this enabled. All right. Like, this is it. This is this is the one you you disable right away. Okay. Don't play around with this. This is what we talked about at the start of the video. Turn this one off. All right. So apply that. I'm embarrassed that wasn't on. Uh, publish to web. Again, disabled. Oh, these are the two ones. Yeah. You don't want the, either one of these on. That's dangerous. Both of these are dangerous. Disabled. You can do this. This is your embed codes. And then you go to like the app owns data. If you're going to be, ex, you know, exposing information out to, to um, external end users. Uh, but really, unless you're purposely building out an app that would distribute information externally you should not you you should not be enabling this by default inside your organization i mean most of the time the, your issues are going to come from people who just didn't realize that they were publishing something broader than they should be um, but this is the type of thing where if a, someone who is nefarious got into your organization and wanted to publish something broadly to the world, like, hey, look, my company's been sitting on the cure for cancer for 15 years or something insane like that. They could do that type of thing through here. Um, don't do this. Very, very scary. Um, next one is export data. Now, this, this is actually pretty important. Uh, you want to enable this uh, across your organization. This, this used to be the one and only toggle that uh, Power BI had that would stop people from export, exporting data from like a visual, like you got a grid, you want to export the stuff. We had to turn that off at the service if you didn't want people or a group of people to be able to do this. Now that functionality is available inside of the Power BI desktop, um, Frankly, unless you're in a small organization, honestly, I don't even really know the use case for this anymore. Turn this on. And if you have report creators who should be building reports, who they have some in their audience who shouldn't be able to you know, export that stuff, have them deal with that at their, their data set level. Um, uh, make sure that, you know, they're aware of it. You know, if you already turn this off or you had it turned off for a subset of people, uh, which is something you can do, right? You can, uh, you know, turn it off or you can, uh, yeah, you can enable it uh, for a, a subset. Yeah, except a specific s security group. Um, so you could turn it off for a subset of people. But generally speaking, just don't do this one. Don't do this one. Let that report writers control who can export, wh who can't. Um, it's a much finer grain of control. Don't do this one. Uh, if you disagree... Comment down below. Love to hear why. Um, uh, same thing on your export to Excel. This is another thing that you want to uh, have enabled. Now, these are two big ones that a lot of people won't realize. If you have these things turned off, like export data or export to Excel turned off inside your organization, people not only are people not going to be able to... Um, export the data out of a data set, but they're not going to be able to do analyze in Excel. They're not going to be able to do, um, uh, they're not gonna be able to look at Power BI data sets inside of Excel. You know, so if you have uh, some analysts who are going in and looking at some things inside of Excel, trying to do some like uh, one-on-one mashups, they're gonna get all, they're gonna get errors. This is especially confusing if you've done this except for a specific security group thing here where you've omitted some people from exporting data, those people will also be blocked from that uh, analyze in Excel functionality. And it's straight up, it's not super intuitive. Uh, they just get a weird error message that they're not allowed to do it. So just don't go down this path, all right? Um, uh, export reports as PowerPoint presentations or PDF documents. 100%, this should be enabled inside your organization. What this basically does is uh, users are able to go in and uh, inside the settings inside of Power BI and export a report as either a PDF or a PowerPoint. Um, it's a little kludgy, uh, but this is a great way for uh, sales organizations to create custom uh, PowerPoint decks for each of their clients. They go in, 
They, you, you know, you make this great, beautiful Power BI dashboard with many different pages. That's their sales presentation. You go and set one filter to, I don't know, Kratos BI uh, company. At Kratos BI company, like filters all the tabs in it so that it's just those values. Then you export it to a PDF or export it to a PowerPoint. And it's just got that information in there for Kratos BI. So you can do a, a sales pitch or a presentation. Uh, that's actually super cool, super effective, a great way to be able to like fine tune and customize your presentations and your pitches for, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of clients without having to, you know, uh, reinvent the wheel each time. Right. So it's actually a, a really cool functionality. Um, export reports as, as image files. Oh, it's actually kind of cool. I don't know anything about that. There's more here. On each one of these things, by the way, there is a learn more. You can go in and you can go and understand all the stuff around Power BI. So if my video doesn't have enough information in here, please go ahead, check out the you know the documentation in, inside of Power BI service. Generally speaking, it's, it is pretty good. Um, print dashboards and reports. Again, uh, at one point in time, it was very difficult, if not nearly impossible outside of a screen grab to print a Power BI report. Uh, this is new functionality that was added in. There's some companies that are are going way above and beyond when it comes to like, hey, we're not going to uh, do any more printing. Uh, and that's awesome. You want to go green? Great. Come in here, turn this off. This will make sure that nobody inside your organization can print anything. Other than that, though, I'm not sure why someone would do that. Go ahead. Um, leave a comment down below as to why you'd want to do that. Certifications. Holy cow. This is a big one. All right. Certifications basically allow you to, um, certify the, the data set that, you know, is this an enterprise grade? Is it a team grade? Right? Like, um, this is a big one that you should be turning on and enabling, uh, if you're in a larger organization where you have many teams that are building out Power BI content, I do recommend uh, restricting this down to like that enterprise grade team, right? And providing a, a URL that will link to the documentation for who can who can certify a Power BI data set inside your company. Um, excuse me. Uh, this is this is something that is. Uh, just one good way to, you know, create that data culture of people that are, you know, not just, you know, hacking away at data, you know, you want that, right? That's where a lot of people learn. That's how we grow. That's how we find insights. But you want to be able to understand that you could differentiate between that, like uh, data that someone just threw together and that certified enterprise data set that is the, the gold standard that the enterprise should be running with and should be working with. All right, this is, so this is, a, this is a big one inside your company. Um, uh, this is allow external guest users to edit and manage content in your company. Um, generally speaking, this is just a no. Um, don't do this. I don't know why you're thinking about doing this. Just don't, don't, don't do it. Don't. Um, if you have a very specific need on this, you can enable this. You know, again, you can do it for you know, a specific security group, or you can do an exception. Uh, but generally speaking, just don't. Email subscriptions. Uh, <clears throat> this is a legacy feature. Uh, you know, you actually uh, take that back. Scratch that. This is not a legacy feature. Um, it was not always available. This is something you want to go in and make sure that's turned on. Uh, there's some companies that don't want these screenshots or notifications to go out. If you have some sensitivity requirements around that, you might be able to turn this off or you might need to turn this off. Generally speaking, though, uh, most companies should turn that on. Feature content. Again, this is functionality that we talked about over here in the feature content list tab down here. It's something you're going to want to have turned on for your entire company. Uh, I Well, mostly. You may, you may want to have specific security groups 
who can identify feature content. Uh, for example, if you're working in that Power BI pyramid where up at the top is that enterprise data organization, right? Uh, and then as it goes down, it becomes much more individual content creator. You may want to isolate who can publish feature content uh, so that's just the heads of departments, just the heads of various teams. You know, uh, the whole point of the feature content space is to elevate up specific reports or content so that comes to the top of what users are looking at, and it's not something that just sits at the bottom of their content. So uh, that's a it's a big one. Uh, but along with the featuring content, it means you don't want to uh, have everyone think everything is feature because you know. Because if everything's special, nothing is, right? Um, allow connections to feature tables. If you're not familiar with featured tables, uh, check out. This is a brand new functionality inside Power BI. Basically, what it allows you to do is define uh, tables inside data flows as a featured or an elevated content that you can allow people to connect to. Uh, this is... This is actually, I'm looking at some unique uh, solutions that this can enable. I'm actually kind of excited about this. Maybe I'll do another video on this in the future. Uh, honestly, I don't know why you'd turn this off. Um, comment down below. And then share to teams straight up. Bring the, you know, this is this is a great new feature. Uh, you know, you want to turn this off. If you don't allow teams inside your organization or your organization has an adapted teams, they've adapted a different communication platform. Maybe you want to turn this off then because, but generally speaking, this is awesome. Turn this on. This brings the data to the people do, you know, where they're doing the work. hundred percent. You should have this enabled. All right. Content pack and app settings. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, no, this is dead. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, uh, create, uh, publish content packs and apps. Uh, I don't know about this thing. Uh, I think this guy's dead. Leave that alone. Same thing with this content packs and apps. I'm 99% sure that these content packs are, are dead old stuff. Leave that. Don't, don't muck with this, this garbage. Um, push apps to end users. This is actually super important. Not only should it be enabled, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna do a bigger video on what this actually means and what this does. Um, but you definitively want this to be enabled. And when you need, oh my, oh my, <laughs> when you have users that are publishing stuff to users through Power Apps, make sure they're they're clicking the little push out to the users and then uh, push out updates and then uh, turning that on. Uh, what that basically does is it ensures that that user has you know, that security token that allows the user access to that app is automatically granted and is pushed out to that user instead of that user having to go in and ask for it. What that means is um, uh, if you don't have this on and you haven't pushed an app out, the only way a user can access an app uh, is if they go into apps up here and then they ask to be added, you know, like, okay, search for apps available, find one, add it in, and then they have it. Um, that works. But if someone sends them a link to an app and says, oh, hey, here's the app that you want to take a look at. Just click on this URL. Nope. With this disabled, without that push, that won't work because a user will go to that link Power BI will look at the user, will look at the security codes that that user has access to, what apps that user has access to, and Power BI will say, no, no, that user can't have access to it. The fix is the user has to then go in and say, okay, in apps, give me the app that I'm looking for. Once they add that app in, they get that security token, and then that link will work. It's super confusing. It's not straightforward. Uh, frankly, almost a bug. I Kind of see the place for how and why, but woof. Enable this, train people on this. Super important. All right. All right, we're 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 in the home stretch here. We've only got a couple left here. 
Integration settings. Use analyzing cell with on-premise data sets. Enable this guy. Yes. Um, uh, what this allows... Uh, oh, actually, this, this only matters if you're in Power BI server. 99% sure. So, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, so here's one that you have to be a little careful about, right? So, uh, remember when I was talking about the customized visuals, about how you might not want some of your apps to be enabled? You may need to turn this off. I got a word. I got news for you. If you work in banking or financial, financial institutions or whatnot, this is one guy you need to turn off. Um, uh, information is shared out with Arcs Maps uh, uh, the, or the Esri services. Now, they've got some terms and privacy policy, and you can go out there and you can take a look at it, and maybe it's okay, but, but I'm going to tell you, this scares the bejesus out of me as an administrator. Um, uh, I, I would shut this, in fact, uh, every Every place I've worked at, this is one of the first, when this came online, I shut that off the, the day it became available because, uh, nope, I'm not trusting a third party that I have no contractual relationship to, uh, to, you know, ensure that, you know, my data is secured, right? So, uh, you, you can go out here, check out these terms and these privacy policies and all that good stuff, but straight up disable that guy, um, uh. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to leave it on because uh, I do YouTube videos to show people how to do this stuff. But generally speaking, no. Uh, global search for Power BI. Next item. This is a big one. This is super important. Highly recommend it. You enable this. Uh, you can find out more here you know, uh, about this global search. But this is really important. It was really hard for users to find content. Um uh, with before this, this is this is a big deal. Um, it just gives the search engine it, the ability to search deeper into your Power BI content. It's not too bad. It's not scary. Uh, you know, it's it's not like we're sending information out to a third party. This is good. Um, Snowflake single sign-on. So this is if you're one of those uh, fortunate few who's out there using Snowflake. Um, big thumbs up for Snowflake. Uh, it's the only one I think I like as good as Azure Synapse. So, uh, but if you're using Snowflake, this is something you gotta have to have turned on to enable single sign-on. Otherwise, you go through this long, drawn-out like sign-on process. It's confusing. Um, use Azure Map Visuals. Actually, I'm far less concerned about this guy than I am about the uh, Esri. Esri is a third-party client company. I don't know anything about them. Uh, Azure Maps Visual. This all uses the uh, Microsoft information. Oh, wait, no. Microsoft shares the address and location queries with TomTom, Tom, but not the name of the customer end user. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to probably say this is another guy you should probably be turning off. Uh, you know, Check with your security team. Maybe it's okay. Go through these terms. Uh, but this is another thing that I probably want to turn that guy off, uh, unless you're a con you know a consulting shop of one like uh, yours truly. Uh, this is not a great one. All right, RBI visuals. <sighs> All right, so this is a good one. Uh, do you want to allow your users to go out and create their own custom Power BI visuals? Uh, Frankly, this is actually super cool because what this allows a user to do is uh, they can go out here and they can check out... What the heck is this? This is not the right link. Nope. Not the right link. Microsoft. Wrong link. <laughs> um, what, uh, you can create any... Any... Uh, custom visual or any visual you want that's um, uh, it's available on Node.js. You can go into the, the Power BI SDK. You can spin that up, 
Uh, you spend an hour or two, if you know, maybe less if you're super good with Node. Uh, maybe a few hours more if you're not very familiar with Node.js. Uh, you can go in and, and make any Node.js visual, an interactive visual inside of Power BI. Uh, so that gives you total freedom to do a bunch of custom stuff. You want to do like a, a, you know, a star rating system or you want to do some like... Uh, a run track circle thing. Uh, you, you can go out there. You can build your own uh, Power BI custom visuals. Uh, it you want to you know you want to even go out and um, just download stuff off of um, uh, Git. You know this is a, another great way to go in and understand and play with and create your own Power BI custom visuals. Hundred percent good option. Uh, this is something you might want to secure down um, uh, to just a specific group who you trust to do this uh, because this is another way for uh, individuals to potentially send information out of your company. So if you had that nefarious actor that I was talking about, um, you might want to say you or you might want to enable this, but only allow certain people to go in and build this out. All right. Um, Add and use certified visuals only, i.e. block the uncertified visuals. Uh, this is, again, a, a, a functionality that is um, uh, important if you're very, you know, if you're in, like I said, one of those financial organizations, if you're in a secured area, this is something you're really going to want to do um, if you have a lot of concern over the visuals that are out there. I'm going to throw a big war warning on this one. Uh, every Microsoft goes through these like updates to their uh, to Power BI, and they require that their certified visuals to be updated to functionality and security and all that stuff every time that they publish an update. And I think it's twice a year or something like that. When they do that, they give the people who who have these certified visuals a period of time in which they can get their visuals certified, and Microsoft is not keeping up with the requests from users who even have current certified visuals to like keep them certified to keep up with pace. So it, it's an issue, uh, or at least it was a month or two ago. I saw Marco, he published some stuff about this. Um, hopefully by now that's something that's been resolved. Uh, but this is a big word of warning around turning this guy off. All right. <laughs> R and Python visual settings. Basically, do you want your users to use R and Python? All right, create audit logs for internal activity auditing and compliance. Yes, this is gonna be on by default. I don't think there's, I don't know how you, oh, you could turn it off in the O365 admin portal, but like, you don't wanna do that. Um, Usage metrics for content creators. Uh, you turn this off and users can't uh, create that little thing inside their Power BI that allows them to see how many people are hitting and using their, their reports. I don't know why you'd, you wouldn't want this enabled. Um, if you have a reason why you're like, oh my God, turn that off in your tenant, please leave a comment down below. Uh, leave that on otherwise. Yeah, per user data and usage metrics for content creators. Basically, this allows them inside these audit, you know, inside their usage reports to see who the users are who are accessing their stuff. Um, yeah, again, maybe there might be a few things like you don't want to see that. I don't know the owner of the company is accessing something. I don't know. I, that this. I don't know why you turn this off. All right. Dashboard settings. I don't know. Dashboard settings enabled. That leave this enabled and um, leave this disabled for dash data classifications. I haven't seen an update to the dashboards in like two, maybe three years. There have been no updates to dashboards. The rumor is they're going away and just being replaced with you know the, all the interactions inside reports. So uh, this very, very, very well might be just legacy. Uh, stuff, so I wouldn't worry about that. All right, developer settings embed content in apps. Yes, oh, 
Only if you're a psycho do you turn that off. Just kidding. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Leave this on. There's no reason to turn this off. All right. Allow service principles to use Power BI APIs. Actually, you want to enable that. Yes. And you want to assign a, a specific security group to it. Uh, what this allows you to do is uh, have APIs that can um, uh, trigger refreshes, uh, download data sets, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, again, where the heck's the APIs? Right down here. You want to enable this stuff inside your company to allow that. All right. Data flow settings. Oh my gosh. Leave this enabled. This comes enabled by default. Do not turn that off. Template app settings. Publish template apps. Now, this is how you can share uh, content internally and externally inside of Power BI without the risk of exporting external information. Uh, I'm going to do some demos on uh, creating a template app or more specifically using a template app. Uh, uh, Reed Havens from Havens Consulting has a great one on uh, Google Analytics uh, that I, I gained a lot of insights from from using it. So uh, I'm going to say go ahead, leave this enabled for your entire company. Same thing is true with installing templated apps um, and uh, installing template apps not listed in the app source. Um, yeah, leaving this disabled is probably a... A, a, a uh, yeah, uh, it's probably important functionality. Again, this is how you could potentially be shipping information outside of your organization. So uh, leave this enabled, leave this enabled, and leave this disabled. All right, Q&A settings and advanced networking. We're going to cover it all in one little go here. Because, boy... Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, this has been a long one. Uh, yes, you want to enable uh, Q&A settings. Uh, basically, what this does is this is helping you know Power BI build out a library for advanced analytics that will sit on top of your, your data so users will be able to start to ask questions of data and just get the answers, right? Get intuitive looking reports, get insights that, you know, you as an, uh, an administrator or Power BI developer just don't have time to build out. Just do it. It's awesome. Leave it as is. So that's it. We've covered it all. We've hit it all. Woo! All right. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, I, I really hope you got something out of this. I hope this was inf informative for you. If you have comments, questions, whatnot, go ahead, put them down in the chat below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you disagree with what I had to say about any of these administrative settings, leave that comment down below as well. Love to hear some feedback. Love to hear other admins, what, the, what you guys have to say on this stuff. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching this stuff. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and maybe even turn on that alarm bell. Well, maybe, maybe. I hit, hit my 1,000 user subscriber thing, so I'm going to be doing a drawing very shortly on uh, on a free, t on, on not one, not two, but three free t-shirts uh, for any of the data guys that we got. Uh, I'm wearing uh, uh, one of my favorites right here, um, but you can, you'll can you be able to get any data guy profile that you want. Uh, by the time this video posts, who knows, maybe I've even already contacted the winners. I haven't as of this moment yet. So uh, please, if you haven't already liked and commented on a video, go ahead, like a video, comment on it, um, get your name included in the drawing. Uh, happy to include some other people. Thank you guys very much. Hope you enjoyed this content. Bookmark it for, for those of you who are working on Power BI admin stuff. This is something you can always turn back to and get more information on. Thanks everybody, have a great day, peace.